Well, good evening, good evening, pro wrestling fans from all around the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, this is going to be another review video. This time, it will be for DDT Judgment 2024 that I finally just completed and got caught up with so I wanted to get on here and review that and then uh, talk about a few of the upcoming DDT events as well because there were some announcements anyway let's go ahead and jump into the review DDT Judgment 2024 took place just yesterday uh, Sunday March 17th this was at Corquin Hall and we had a whopping 12 matches for the show. And most of them were pretty good. Some of them were really, really weird. But then again, it's DDT. So that's to be expected. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the first match. All right, the show started off with a singles match. We had Soma Takao taking on the debuting Tsubasa Suzuki. I have to say, personally, this was actually a really good starting match for this card. Um, it went a decent length as well. It, it definitely didn't feel like one of those quick opening matches. I felt like these two went at it for a good while, so I definitely enjoyed this match. What a way to open up the show. Uh, Soma Takao ends up getting the victory, pinning Tsubasa Suzuki with a perfect driver, but shout out to Tsubasa Suzuki. He put up a really good fight, and I felt like he looked good in this match, but both guys did a great job. And I felt like they got plenty of time in this opening match. So not bad to start this show off. Okay, let's move on to the next match. Oh. Here we go. All right, let's go on to this next match. This next match was pretty enjo enjoyable. All right, we had some trios action. We had first the team of Toy Illusion Erukia, and they were taking on the trio of Yuni, Yuyo Kuroku, and Kazuma Sumi. Now, the folks on the second team I've definitely seen before. Um, good to see Yuni again, got the chance to see more of his high flying, but you know what? This was a match that really went back and forth between both teams. I felt like it was very solid with how all six men were used in this match. Um, I have to say, Toy, well, before it used to be Toy Kojima, but they shortened his name to Toy as in T-O-Y, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But Overall, this was a solid match between both of these teams. I felt like it went the distance. But Toy uh, got the pin on Kazuma Sumi um, after hitting, I think they called it the Kojima Impact. I think that's what they called his finisher. But he got the victory for, for his team, Toy, Illusion, and Rukia. But a solid trios match. Okay, let's move on to our next match. This next match was was rather interesting. This is a very interesting tag match, but here we go. We had the team of Toru Awashi and Gorgeous Matsuno taking on the team of Kaisuke Ishii and Shinichiro Kawamatsu. Now, this was my first time seeing Gorgeous Matsuno in action. Um, <laughs> I tell you, uh, for 
guy that I assume is, you know, the oldest and skinniest, definitely, he took his licks, but actually dished out a little bit of offense himself. Some, some you know, flying, flying cross chops. Like, I felt like he did a couple of those. And had a big old, big old chop print on his chest. Like, it looked pretty nasty looking. But uh, the dude, the dude was hanging. The dude was hanging with the with the other four. I felt like, <laughs> at first, Toru Awashi didn't want to tag in and was going to let gorgeous Matsuno get his licks in and just stay in for a while. So I thought that was kind of funny. But, but honestly, this was a this was a decent decent match. I just, like I said, I didn't really know what to expect. But um, I definitely like the back and forth sequences between um, Toru Awashi and Shinichiro Kawamatsu. But ultimately, in the end, uh, Kaisuke pinned Gorgeous Matsudo. After hitting, I don't know what his finisher is called, but it was kind of like a cross arm driver. It, it looked really neat. It actually actually looked really neat. Kind of had him old, over the shoulder, had his arms crossed, and then drove him to the mat. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, the team of uh, Kaisuke Ishii and Shinichiro Kawamatsu pick up the victory. All right. <laughs> Let's go on to this next match. Oh man, this was this was weird. But we had a special singles match of Super Sasha Dango Machine taking on Akito. Now what kind of started off as, you know, a regular like fast-paced match. Then after a while turned into slow motion and then it turned into one having the other trapped in a submission and then them both falling asleep while this video is playing on the screen which this happened twice in this match and I was just like what the heck? And the referee was checking on both men and like they wouldn't move and you know it was like they were asleep and then just he just called for the bell for just I guess a count out draw. Like no nobody responded. Nobody got up. It's not like he was doing like a count of a count to 10 or anything like that, but just both were down like they were asleep. I mean, he was like slapping them and hitting them. Nobody got up. So he just called for the bell. And it just ended in a draw. Like, it was weird. It was really, really weird. Um, and shoot, even Super Sasadango Machine got his mask removed in the middle of this match. Which, honestly, I felt like that was really interesting. Like, typically... Masked wrestlers that get their mask removed, they usually cover their face up and whatnot. And but no, not not with this match. <laughs> it, it actually kept going. So um, you know, nothing. I can't say the match itself was spectacular, but it was just it was weird, and you know, it was a comedy match. So you know, just it was quite an interesting finish to this match. But, like I said, that's DDT, and if you've never seen a, a DDT show, um, just fair warning, there's a lot of comedy matches in DDT. So, just the FYI. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the next match. Ah, here we go. And even this had a little bit of comedy. Okay, we had more trios action. As we had, uh, I'm like I said, I'm probably gonna misspell, mispronounce this. Schadenfreude International versus Damnation TA. 
So team number one is Chris Brooks, Antonio Honda, and Masahiro Takanashi. And they took on Damnation TA's Daisuke Sasaki, Kanon, and MJ Paul. Now, of course, as you know, the first team, you know, was getting settled and getting into the ring, Antonio Honda tripped, I guess, coming off the turnbuckle after posing and then just jumping down and I guess rolled his his knee or something like that. So I guess that's part of his gimmick. Like the the clumsiness, I guess, is his gimmick. But yeah. But overall, this match had its share of action with a decent dose of comedy, courtesy of Antonio Honda. Which, <laughs> yeah, he got on the mic and, you know, which he usually does, you know, every match he's in, he gets on the mic. So this really wasn't a surprise. Um, definitely loved uh, seeing CDK get involved in this match, you know. Uh, Chris Brooks, Masahiro Takanashi. Uh, definitely enjoy watching them, whether they're in a tag team or separately. But Damnation TA ended up getting the last laugh as Kanan ended up submitting Antonio Hondo with kind of like a grounded Cobra twist. So, um, tried to hang in there, but had no choice but to tap out. So, Damnation TA walks away with the victory. Alrighty. Let's go on to our next match. Alrighty. We had another special singles match. We had Sanshiro Takagi taking on, representing Ganbare Pro Wrestling, Ken Oka. Um, and of course, he had a bunch of different wrestlers representing the Gambare Pro Wrestling promotion in attendance. So I thought that was pretty neat. You know, got to see Yapi, got to see um, um, Riara, got to see Yuri, and a couple of others. So I thought that was pretty cool. But this was a pretty decent match. This was a good back and forth match between both these guys. Um, really didn't know what to expect, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I Definitely more than the Akito Super Sasa Dango machine match, but yeah, this was pretty enjoyable. Um, Ken Oka was able to pick up the victory, uh, pinning uh, Sanshiro Takagi after hitting him with the spear. So, good showing there, and Good to see Ganpro represented. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Before we finish out the remaining matches of this card, here's a quick word on the sponsor of this video, Game Beauty. Check them out. As you continue to enjoy content here at Blitzball Champ Gaming, be sure you take a moment to check out Game Beauty. Beauty inspired by gaming. Game Beauty brings to you video game related makeup and cosmetic products. You have products such as eyeshadow palettes, elemental pearl highlighters, eyeshadow brushes, liquid eyeliner pens by Akideris, and even non-makeup products like graphic tees. They even have special collaboration makeup kits, such as this Persona 5 Heat Wave Brush Single, Metaverse Bundle, and even a Phantom Thieves limited edition makeup collection.
also remember that Game Beauty provides international shipping of $60 or more. And if you use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP, all in caps, you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that to your advantage. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy, and thank you. Alrighty, let's go ahead and finish out the card for DDT Judgment 2024. Let's go to this next match. Alrighty, special tag team match. We have the team of Kazusada Higuchi and Yukio Naya taking on the team of Shuji Ishikawa and my man Yoshitatsu. A solid match from both of these teams. Uh, definitely went the distance, hard hitting. I really like the exchanges between Yoshitatsu and Yukio Naya. Thought those were pretty good. But honestly, all four of these guys look really great. So I was definitely digging this match from start to finish. I know Yoshitatsu did gain some weight, but definitely I've always enjoyed Yoshitatsu ever since I first saw him back in uh, WWE. So definitely big fan of his. Um, but yeah, solid tag team match from both of these teams. Really could have gone either way. But Shuji Ishikawa hits a very nice thunderous crucifix bomb on Kazusada Higuchi and pins him for the one, two, three. And Ishikawa and Yoshitatsu pick up the victory. But yeah, that was a nice crucifix bomb. I mean, had him up nicely and then just transition, sit out power bomb for the one, two, three. Very well done. But yeah, that was definitely a solid tag team match. Alrighty, folks. Well, it is time to get into some championship matches. Y'all ready for some championship matches? Alrighty, let's go with this first one. Alright, we had the KOD six-man tag team championships on the line. As we had the champions of Jun Akiyama, Dan Shokudino, and Makoto Oishi taking on the challenging team of Kazus, Kazuki Hirata, Naruki Doi, and Shinya Aoki. Well, it did not take long for the comedy and nastiness to kick in, because <laughs> Don Shokudino kept scaring Naruki Doi to death, just threatening to kiss him and threatening to just, oh man. I mean, of course, you know, he has a thong on under his, his trunks and was threatening him with that and just, oh, man. Uh, that, had to, that had to happen in this match. It just had to happen. Ugh. Anyway, um, the match was all right for the most part. Just, like, not really a fan of the Don Shoku Dino antics. Just, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. But, um, it's good to see Jun Akiyama in action. Kazuki Hirata, who will be at the DDT in Philadelphia show, so that should be cool. Um, Naruki Doi, been a fan of him since Dragon Gate. Of course, he's, um, one half of Speed Muscle with uh, Masato Yoshino, which who's now retired but one of my favorite tag teams, so. But overall, this match was all right, for the most part. Uh, but Makoto Oishi picked up the victory, pinning Kazuki Hirata, which many might say was kind of an upset. But yeah, Makoto Oishi pinned Kazuki Hirata uh, with kind of, kind of a victory roll reversal pin, so to speak. But got him for the one, two, three, and 
Jun Akiyama, Daiden Shoku Dino, and Makoto Oishi retain the KOD six-man tag team championships. So congrats to them. All right. Let's move on to this next title match, which ended up being one of my favorites from this card, and it was quite brutal. Check it out. We had the DDT Extreme Championship on the line as the champion Shunma Katsumata took on the challenger of Hideki Okatani. Now, of course, the, the ring was outfitted with all sorts of crazy props. I mean, you had a you had a vine board in the middle of the ring with a snake. Well, well, looked like a snake plushie and barbed wire. The corner turnbuckle pads had like um, had like spikes, barbed wire, and tacks and safety pins. And oh man, it was crazy. It was really crazy. The way they had the ring outfit, it was just had all sorts of nastiness. And these two tore each other apart. I mean, it did not take long for them both to get bloodied up early in this match. Um, they even both took those little thin sticks. Both had a pair of those thin wooden sticks, or like their wooden spikes or whatnot. And they stabbed themselves in the head. Both of them just did it to themselves and posed for the crowd. I was like, man, that was that was crazy. But um, yeah, both of these guys tore each other apart. I mean, both were bloodied up badly. Um, there was even golden thumbtacks used, and they both kept getting slammed on them. Like, this was a very brutal match. But I mean, hey, Extreme Championship, you, you best believe it's going to have no rules, no DQ, weapons free, all sorts of craziness. And this was no different. So, enjoyed it from start to finish. Very entertaining, very brutal. But, Shunma Katsumata ended up picking up the victory and retaining the DDT Extreme Championship. He hit a diving splash on Hideki Okatani with part of that vine board on him you know, with the barbed wire and everything, so that was the finish. Pretty good finish, but yeah, um, love the, the sportsmanship between both of them after the match, but yeah, Shunma Katsumata, who will also be making the trip to uh, Philly, um, picks up the victory in this brutal match. Alrighty. Let's go to our next championship match. Here we go. Okay, we had the DDT Universal Championship on the line as the champion, Mao, defended against challenger Takeshi Masada. Now, Takeshi Masada started off having the upper hand on Mao. And, you know, these two definitely went back and forth. Uh, this match did not last as long as I thought it was going to, unfortunately. Uh, I wish it would have. I really wish it would have. But it was definitely... It felt... It didn't feel so much one-sided at first, but I think later on in the match, as it was getting towards the end, it started to feel a little one-sided in favor of Mao. But Mao actually got a victory via knockout. I guess knockout slash referee stoppage. As he hit the Tornado Whirlwind on uh, Masada, and he just he could not get back up, so the ref called for the bell, and Mao wins by, I guess, TKO with that Tornado Whirlwind. But um, the match was all right. It just, like I said, it didn't last that long. 
So that was the only thing with that. Um, what I thought was very interesting, though, was after the match, Mao, who will be making the trip to U.S. for the Philly show, as well as Takeshi Masada, he was he was on the card as well. But Mao challenged Billy Starks to a no rules, no disqualification, anything goes match for the DDT Universal Championship. Wow. I'm actually really shocked that he called her out, of all people. But yeah, that match is going to happen at the DDT in Philadelphia show, which I will be at that show. But, wow, I can't believe we're getting that match. That's going to be crazy. Ooh. Now, now don't get me wrong. Billy, Billy Starks has done her share of, you know, extreme matches. But, ooh, going against Mal. Man, that's, that's going to be crazy. I, I look forward to that match. That's going to be a crazy match. Okay. Oh, you know what? I actually skipped over one. I actually skipped over one. So let me backtrack. Um, this next match actually happened before the DDT Universal Championship. So my apologies there. This was the match that happened before. So I, I jumped one ahead. But it's okay. We're going to cover it. So, KOD Tag Team Championships are on the line. Uh, the champions, Tetsuya Endo and Yuki Ino, defended against Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai. If I remember correctly, I believe they were from um, All Japan Pro Wrestling, if I remember correctly. But anyway, this was actually a solid tag team title match between both of these teams. Uh, it really went back and forth. I definitely like the exchanges between um, Yuki Ino and Ryuki Honda. I really enjoyed those segments. Um, love the high-flying uh, Tetsuya Endo, who will also be making the, the trip to the U.S., so looking forward to that. But this was a solid tag title match between both of these teams, and Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anza, they got really close. Really, really close. I felt like this was a very underrated match. But Tetsuya Endo ended up picking up the victory for his team as he pinned uh, Ryuki Honda after hitting him with a shooting star press. So, nice finish there. But a very solid tag title match between both of these teams. Okay. And then it was the DDT Universal Championship, which I just talked about. And then we go to our last special singles match. Check this out. This was the semifinal. Alrighty. Special singles match. We had Konosuke Takeshita taking on Yuma Aoyagi, which I believe Yuma Aoyagi is from uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling as well. Uh, this was definitely, definitely one of my favorite matches of the show. And these two delivered on a high level. Um... Was very impressed with Yuma Aoyagi and just the offense that he brought to Takeshita, which, I mean, Takeshita, I had, had him pick to win, but still, like, the fighting spirit he displayed was just, was spectacular. And this was a hard-hitting match back and forth. We got to see some high-flying as well from Takeshita, but, and Takeshita, I tell you, man, those knee strikes, man, I'm usually very high on the, the V-triggers from Kenny Omega, but T Takeshita, he's got some really good knee strikes. I mean, those running knee strikes, whoo-wee. Solid, solid striker. And he nailed uh, Aoyagi with a, with a handful of them in this match. But this was a good, solid match. 
enjoyed it from start to finish. But Takeshita was able to squeeze out the victory, pinning Yuma Aoyagi after hitting him with kind of like a spinning falcon arrow, uh, and then pinned him for the one, two, three, but a phenomenal match between both these guys, and Takeshita will walk away with the victory. And then the main event of DDT Judgment 24, 2024, that is, came down to this. We had the KOD Open Weight Championship on the line. As the champion, Yuki Ueno, defended the title against Harashima. And I believe both of these guys are making the Philadelphia trip as well. But another solid, hard-hitting main event between both these guys. And I must say, Harashima got his neck jacked up. He had a big old nasty bruise, like, on this side of, like, his neck going into the collarbone. Oh, man. Like, that was a nasty-looking bruise. But, you know, when you get hit, you know, those chops and kicks and everything, like it, those bruises add up. And they do show. But this was a solid main event. Um, Harashima, I really, he looked very strong in this match. And really just had Yuki Ueno just dazed a couple of times. I felt like he had the upper hand quite a bit in this match. But... This was a very enjoyable match, definitely main event worthy. But Yuki Ueno was able to sneak out the victory just at the right opening as he was able to pin Harashima with, I don't know what move that was. It was like a flipping headlock driver or something like that. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Sari Ano's um, Temps Tendre that little flipping fisherman that she does. That's what that kind of reminded me of, but I don't know what it's called. But Yuki Ueno was able to pin Harashima and retain the KOD Openweight Championship. So, no title changes on this show. Um, kind of a bummer. I mean, it, it would have been nice if there was like maybe one, but it is what it is. Uh, no title changes. But yeah, a solid show from uh, DDT with Judgment 2024. There were some very enjoyable matches. But uh, yeah, I felt like it finished on a high note. And hey, with the DDT in Philly show coming up in a couple of weeks, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how the rest of the card looks. So should be good. And I can't wait to do a preview on that since I will be attending that show. So. Yeah. Um, a couple of other uh, DDT shows that are coming up. They actually announced uh, not too long ago the King of DDT tournament. That's right. King of DDT tournament is coming back this year. Of course, Chris Brooks won the tournament last year. But the schedule, you have uh, three dates. You have May the 5th. May the 11th, and May 26th. So I believe the first round, all the first round matches, so it's 16 competitors, I believe, um, and all the first round matches will be uh, on May 5th. And I think maybe perhaps the remaining rounds except for the finals will be on May 11th, and then the finals is on May 26th, I think. But... Uh, I'm going to definitely plan to check that out. I didn't get a chance to check it out last year. So um, I definitely want to see what that tournament's like. Because, you know, I haven't really caught a uh, DDT tournament before. So I figured, you know, why not check this one out for the first time? You know what I mean? So I'm going to look forward to that. And they also announced the date for Wrestle Peter Pan. 2024, which is pretty much like their Wrestle Kingdom, and that will be on July 21st. So, definitely looking forward to checking that out. I watched Wrestle Peter Pan last year. It was it was pretty entertaining. So I'll definitely 
uh, check this year's out. But yeah, so DDT's got a lot of uh, good things coming up, a lot to look forward to. And I know that they they already announced some of their matches for their Philly show. Um, let me see if I can pull up a few of them. There's only there's only been a couple of them. Um, I know Speedball Mike Bailey, I believe, will be going up against Yuki Ueno. Uh, you got Kanosuke Takeshita versus Shunma Katsumata. That should be really good. You also have uh, Kid Lycos and Chris Brooks taking on Shota and the bounty hunter Brian Keith. That should be really interesting. So, yeah, definitely the DDT and Philly show is, is starting to shape up. Uh, yeah, I was right. Um, Yuki Ueno versus Speedball Mike Bailey. You also got <laughs> Kazuki Hirata versus Yoshihiko. Oh, man, that should be really, really fun. And like I said, they're going to have um, Mao versus Billy Starks for the DDT Universal Championship. So, man, that's no rules, no DQ. So that should be a lot of fun. So, yeah, they got, a, they got a, a handful of matches already made. And don't forget, they also have Nick Wayne, Andrew the Giant Everett participating. Um, Tetsuya Endo, Daisuke Sasaki, Takeshi Masada, and Kanon. They're participating in the show as well. So, you know, like I said, they'll probably have the full card um, probably before the end of this week. So... We'll see. Anyways, that'll do it for for this video. Um, don't forget to check out the link to Game Beauty. And let me know what y'all's thoughts were on DDT Judgment 2024. What did you think the show? 12 massive matches. Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now I'm about to go pass out because as you can see, I'm exhausted. But for another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the YouTube, the tube. My name is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed start to the week and I will see y'all in the next video in our live stream. Take care. Later.